So Miniware have sent me over their latest product to test out and it's this, the MHP30 Mini Hot Plate. And look at it, it's so small and cute. But don't let the small size deceive you, it actually packs quite a punch, heating the hot plate here on top up to 300 degrees Celsius in about two and a half minutes, give or take. Similar to Miniware's other products, it features an OLED display on the front and has a programmable menu system with three memory uh, recall functions that you can also customize. Now its purpose in the workshop is for PCB or printed circuit board work, either assembling brand new circuit boards or maybe you need to do a repair on a SMD board, remove a bad component, reinstall a new one. So it does reflow work and things like that. So let's put it to the test and see if it's hot or not. This video is proudly sponsored by JLC PCB, who offer high quality PCBs at very affordable prices. They offer fast production time as quick as 24 hours from ordering to your order being shipped worldwide and ordering is as simple as uploading your Gerber file and choosing your design preferences. Order 5 PCBs from as little as $2. In the box you'll find the hot plate itself, a high temperature silicone USB-C cable, and depending what kit you buy, a 60 watt power delivery adapter. The hot plate comes with a high temperature silicone cover to protect the hot plate's non-stick ceramic coating. The body of the hot plate is made from metal and it feels very well built. On the back there are two buttons to navigate through the menu system and a USB-C connector for power input. The hot plate is removable from the base. Exactly why it's removable I'm not quite sure. Maybe it's to replace the hot plate if you wear it out, or perhaps Miniware could develop a different sized hot plate in the future. Underglow from an RGB LED changes colour depending on the temperature of the hot plate. Unlike 99% of RGB applications, this one actually serves a practical use, giving the user a visual reminder if the hot plate is too hot to touch. Miniware claim it takes 150 seconds to reach 300 degrees Celsius. However, I found my unit was slightly quicker at 120 seconds or exactly 2 minutes. Let's move on to testing. First I'm going to try desoldering the LM2596 from this PCB. In the past I have attempted to desolder this IC from the PCB with a normal soldering iron. However it's proven difficult due to the thermal pad soldered underneath the IC. After 30 seconds of continuous heating, the flux is bubbling around a few solder joints and the solder appears to have softened. I tried poking the diode and well I'm sure you can see how easy it was to remove. Next I tried the buck IC, however it required further heating. After a total of one minute of heating, the buck IC was free along with pretty much every other component. Here you can see the thermal pad the IC is soldered to that I mentioned earlier. This is what makes desoldering these ICs quite tricky.
The hot plate has a ceramic coating which makes cleanup fairly easy. Once cool, any solder present on the hot plate falls off when brushed away. Unfortunately, flux does still stick to the hot plate, but that can be easily cleaned off with the appropriate solvent. So far we've desoldered, but what about soldering components to a PCB? It takes about 12 seconds for the paste to melt and wick into the joints. So far the hot plate has performed well, but we've only used a small PCB for testing. So how will it perform with a much larger PCB? Maybe it'll struggle to effectively heat a large PCB. To test it I have this near mint dial up modem card with a big ol' IC that I can attempt to remove. Since the hot plate is relatively small, balancing larger PCBs can be problematic. However I solved this by cutting a wooden block to match the height of the hot plate to support the card. For the sake of experimenting, I applied flux to the joints to see what it would be like to do reflow work with this hot plate. Now when I first unboxed the hot plate and saw its size I thought mm, I wonder if that's a bit on the small side but actually after using it I think its size is perfect and the reason for that is mostly I will be using it for repair work desoldering a bad component from a circuit board and replacing it with a new one and really if you had a bigger hot plate than this you'd be heating up lots of other components on the circuit board which you don't really want to do you just want to localize the heat to the area that you're working on so I actually think the size is really good so so far I'm really impressed with the performance of this hot plate it's been able to desolder components on small and large circuit boards and it's also done some reflow work for us but there's one question on all our minds and that is, does it make good pancakes? And the answer is yes, it does make good pancakes. But it does more than that. It fits right into MiniWare's ecosystem, where last year I reviewed the TS80P soldering iron and their SMD tweezers. If you want to see the reviews for those, there'll be a link pop up in the corner. And the new hot plate just fits right into this electronic ecosystem that MiniWare is continuing to develop, making these niche products available at an affordable price to you and me is simply fantastic. And now has never been a better time than to get into building your own electronic circuit boards with neat little tools like this available to buy. So thank you very much to MiniWare for sending me their hot plate to review and thank you for watching. If you found the video useful, please give it a like. It'd be much appreciated. Also, if you want to see more videos like this, you know where that subscribe button is. Thank you for all my Patreons for your continued support and I'll see everyone in the next video. Bye for now.